So this is an interesting question, and one that was raised at the end of Tales of the Jedi when Dooku told Palpatine that Qui-Gon could have been a powerful ally had he not died. Sidious said, for you, and the conversation started to shift. So today let's discuss the possibility of Qui-Gon Jinn actually turning away from the Jedi and joining Dooku had he not died to Darth Maul in The Phantom Menace. We did hear Dooku in Episode 2 tell Obi-Wan that Qui-Gon would have joined him in the dark side. And to Obi-Wan's disbelief, he said Qui-Gon would never join you. So let's talk about that. However, before we do begin, we need to understand Qui-Gon a little bit better. And for those new to my channel and to Star Wars. Qui-Gon was a maverick. He went his own way, did his own thing. He wasn't on the Jedi Council by choice. He knew the decisions he made and his overall view of the Force was what made him unfit in the Council's eyes. For example, many fans would argue that Qui-Gon Jinn's use of the Force to manipulate the Chance Cube with Watto in Episode 1 before the Boonta Eve pod race was an act of the dark side, or rather, more in the middle of light and dark. Grey, some would call it. I always see this argument everywhere online. Now, I personally always saw this as Qui-Gon balancing the odds since Watto's Chance Cube was rigged by Watto himself. Qui-Gon was all about trusting the Force, and believing balance was key. He believed that he met Anakin for a reason, and it was all a virgins in the Force. He knew that Watto had tampered with the dice, and he knew that he would lose. He would just have to get Shmi, and he didn't want Shmi. He knew that the chance cube would land on Shmi as to Watto's rules, and he didn't want that. He knew Anakin was the chosen one. He knew he needed to train the boy, and the boy needed to become a Jedi, because he would bring balance to the Force, as the prophecy was foretold. I believe Qui-Gon would have literally been the best father figure and teacher for Anakin, preventing his whole downfall to the dark side. I think Obi-Wan was a good mentor and a good friend, but I don't think he was experienced enough to deal with all of the dark side emotions and turbulence that Anakin dealt with in his own mind. Primarily because he became a Jedi at the age of nine, where he had so many attachments and nine years of living a very, very harsh life as a slave. Okay, so we understand that a little bit about Qui-Gon. Now here's an excerpt from the book Master and Apprentice, which is canon. This here is going to be a quote from Qui-Gon Jinn to Rail Avros, who was once Dooku's apprentice that Qui-Gon grew close with. And for those who don't know, Rail Avros always reminded me of Sam Elliott from Roadhouse. I always felt like he was this really rogue, maverick Jedi that kind of really just did whatever he wanted. I mean, he smoked, he gambled, he went on dates, he did literally anything he wanted. Things you wouldn't expect a Jedi in a traditional sense to do. However, he was still very much in the light side of the Force, I would say. Anyways, over time, Qui-Gon and Rail became friends, and Rail would sometimes help Qui-Gon with certain situations and mentor him. Now, in one instance, Qui-Gon told him this. I don't turn towards the light because it means someday I'll win some sort of cosmic game. I turn toward it because it is the light. This line right here, I think really helps us all see how Qui-Gon really thought and really answers a lot in this video. I believe he didn't use the light side because he felt elitist or like it's the higher level thinking way of using the force, much like Mace Windu did in my opinion. He uses it because it is the light, simply put, and there is no other option. While I do think Qui-Gon was growing very weary of the Jedi's time past, and of course it's up to George Lucas to decide where Qui-Gon's path would have gone should he have lived, including his disillusionment with the Jedi and their poor belief in his reveal of fighting the first Sith Lord in a millennia, I don't think he would have joined the dark side. I just really don't see it. Now, that's not to say that he wouldn't have joined Dooku. That's not to say that he wouldn't have left the Jedi Council, the Jedi Order as a whole. Quite the opposite. I believe he would have joined Dooku. However, it would have taken some time. I don't think he would have turned to the dark side. So it would have been a very impromptu conversation. It would have been a very short conversation conversation where Dooku would have told him of all the things that are going on with the Jedi and Qui-Gon would most probably have agreed. However, when it came to actually executing all of the plans against the Jedi, I don't think Qui-Gon would have gone along with it and perhaps he would have gone back to the Jedi and maybe even ratted out his old mentor. Who knows? I don't think Qui-Gon would have turned his back on Obi-Wan or Anakin. Now in this book, Master and Apprentice, it really explains in detail how much of a great relationship Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan had. 
It starts off quite rocky, where Qui-Gon is basically thinking of Obi-Wan as this sort of loser in the Force, that he just really sucks at everything he does. And he was thinking that when he was younger, he was so much more advanced and so much further in the Force than Obi-Wan is at this time. Now, when it came for Qui-Gon Jinn to be granted a seat on the Jedi Council, he declined. And he did so because he knew that he wouldn't have time anymore for Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Obi-Wan would go off to a different master. Because typically those who were on the council didn't have Padawans because they were so busy with important affairs. So I don't think he would have turned his back on Obi-Wan or Anakin. I felt he was so deep in the light side that he felt using the force for anything can be seen as the greater good, while killing and causing turmoil against many innocents in the galaxy would not be the Jedi way. And for that reason, I feel he would distance himself from his former master, Count Dooku, he would for sure agree with Dooku. Don't get me wrong when it came to how the Jedi had become corrupt with politics and the dealings of the Senate, but actually making decisions and collaborations with a Sith Lord like Darth Sidious and knowing Dooku was now Darth Tyrannus, he wouldn't ever accept such a title or position for himself. I think Qui-Gon's ability to gauge what is the true meaning of the Force and what is just the Jedi Council being brainwashed by politics in the Senate is what made him such an interesting character in my opinion. He was so grounded and he was so rooted in his own beliefs and in the beliefs of the Force. I think he was probably the most true Jedi in my opinion when it came to what it means to really be a Jedi. I think Yoda had it all wrong as he got older. I think all of them had it wrong. I think they were just getting too thrown into the political game that Palpatine was marionetting. And I believe that they were all just pawns in a larger scheme and they didn't even know it themselves. Now this could be because Palpatine just manipulated everyone that they felt they needed to take action. The fact that they had this clone army just created out of thin air and to them was a surprise. They just went along with it. I think they should have asked more questions. I think they should have dove a little bit deeper into everything. And I don't think they should have gotten so involved with the politics of the galaxy. Maybe one mission or two here for the Senate, but beyond that, they're not mercenaries. They're not soldiers. There's keepers of the peace. And I think, you know, how Mace Windu said that, he literally said the opposite of what they're doing, which was quite ironic. So back to Qui-Gon Jinn, I don't think he would have turned to the dark side, but I do think he would have left the Jedi Order eventually. I don't believe he really cared to be on the council at all and we even see this in episode one when obi-wan is telling him while they're on the terrace during anakin's investigation and testing that qui-gon really didn't care about being on the council he didn't care what others thought of him whereas obi-wan did in his young age qui-gon was far beyond that and that i think makes him so cool makes him so wise beyond his years and really, it makes me wonder what Star Wars would have been like had he survived. And why he didn't just reach out to Anakin more in the Force. He was able to do it to Yoda. Perhaps his training wasn't complete, but hey, we'll see what happens. Fun little unknown fact is that Yoda's cloak in Return of the Jedi was actually Qui-Gon Jinn's. They added that in a little bit later once Disney took over, of course. That wasn't George's thinking, but that's eh, a cute little story. I like it. Now, I'm just hoping that Luke's green crystal is actually Qui-Gon's. That would be something really special. Because after all, Luke's saber from Return of the Jedi looks just like Obi-Wan Kenobi's, and he got those schematics from Obi-Wan's box of stuff for him. And there were schematics on how to build a lightsaber, which is why it looks like his. Is. So I'm hoping that he would have gotten that green crystal from the same box, which would have been from either Qui-Gon's lightsaber or already had been dismantled from his lightsaber and just put in the box by Obi-Wan Kenobi. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think Qui-Gon Jinn would have turned to the dark side? Do you think he would have joined Dooku? Do you think he would have told Dooku, no way, I'm never joining you and stayed with the Jedi? Or do you think he would have joined Dooku for a little bit and saw what he's up to and then quit and joined the Jedi back again? I always love hearing your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks for watching this video. Please check me out on Spotify as I have daily podcasts, new episodes every single day. And I will see you all in the next episode on Star Wars Theory. Until then, remember my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, the Force will be with you always.